This is the all new, completely redesigned MacBook Pro. Oh yeah. I'm Renee Ritchie. Thanks Maiden for sponsoring. Hit subscribe so you don't miss a review because right now I'm reacting live. Oh yeah, these are monsters. <laughs> these are monsters. They're thick. T-H-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-C thick. With a notch. You got the notch. And it comes in two sizes, a 16 inch model and for the first time, a compact yet immensely powerful 14 inch model. And you know, I don't hate it. I mean, I, I, I am, I've said over and over again that I would easily trade a notch for thin, thin bezels and a way better camera. And it looks like that's what we've finally gotten. I mean, I've been asking for this for two years. I've got renders I've made going back, I think three years with the notch. It can move 50% more air, even at lower fan speeds. This thermal design enables MacBook Pro to deliver phenomenal sustained performance while operating quietly. What's important about this is that Apple can make super high performance chips, but if the thermal envelope, uh, if they hit against that, then they're gonna have to uh, you know, th throttle those down. Um, and that's what happens in the MacBook Air. But so he's saying that a lot of the tasks, uh, the thermal envelope is big enough that it won't have to turn on. But for those pro workloads, when you're really running those chips, at high workloads for long periods of time. It has this cooling system. They haven't said how long it'll persist for. Users value the full height function row on the standalone Magic Keyboard, and we've brought it to the MacBook Pro. Yeah, the touch bar is dead. R-I-P, D-E-D, dead. The keyboard is set in a double anodized black well that elegantly highlights the backlit glyphs on the keys. And black, everybody knows that black is the color for pros. There's an HDMI port for conveniently connecting to displays and TVs a Thunderbolt 4 port, which connects to high-speed peripherals, and an SD card slot enabling fast access to media. On the other side, the headphone jack now has advanced support for high-impedance headphones, and there are two more Thunderbolt 4 ports. And they're totally walking the MacBook Pro back. Like, this is basically um, a repudiation of the 2016 MacBook Pro. And I'm still split on this. I mean, I'm not gonna use the ports that they're bringing back, but I know a lot of people will, and I know it's not about me. It's like that scene in Doctor Strange with the ancient one where I have to learn the lesson. It's not about me. And yes, MagSafe is coming back to the MacBook Pro. MagSafe 3 has a new design that supports more power into the system, and you can still charge via the Thunderbolt ports. So MagSafe will mitigate for it because you won't have to plug in. You can plug into MagSafe instead. So you still have the same amount of things. So that's good. I'm, I'm very happy about that. With M1 Pro, you can connect up to two Pro Display XDRs. And with M1 Max, you can connect up to three Pro Display XDRs and a 4K TV all at the same time. That's over 75 million pixels of screen real estate. I still want to see if there is a Ethernet in the power brick, uh, fingers crossed. On the new MacBook Pro, we're taking the stunning Retina display to an entirely new level. Rumors have been mini LED. We started by bringing the sides of the enclosure closer to the active area of the display. Here they're Thanos snapping those, those bezels. In a 24% thinner border. We also expanded the display up and around the camera, making the top border 60% thinner. They totally notched it. Totally notched it. I, I'm here for it. Mac OS takes full advantage of this extra space by raising the menu bar up and out of the way. So you don't really lose much. You just lose the middle of the menu bar. And if you had menu stuff there, you should have cleaned that up a while ago. And it looks great in dark mode, which our pro users love. And it basically disappears in dark mode. So this is great. It's like consistent with Apple's design language. It looks like an Apple product. And we finally have that edge to edge. The 16 inch model has a 16.2 inch display in nearly the same size enclosure. 7.7 .7 million pixels, 3456 by 2234. The 14 inch model has an expansive 14.2 inch active area. 3024 by 1964. Very nice. So that is probably true uh, at 2X finally, true retina mode, retina displays for these Macs. We're super excited to bring ProMotion technology to the Mac. I love this. I love this so much. Uh, you know, some people don't notice it. Uh, I do notice it. It's not a big deal for me at 120 hertz, but the big deal for me is that it is dynamic and it can adjust to, you know, 60 hertz, 48 hertz if you want to edit 30 frames per second or 48 frames per second. But it also makes, it, it's also good for battery savings because you don't always need, like if you're looking at static images, you don't even need 60 hertz. So this is just a huge, huge win. One billion colors for ultra smooth gradients. 
And for the first time, it's a Liquid Retina XDR display. And yes, also mini LED, which, uh, you know, OLED at bigger than phone sizes isn't great. Like some in small batches, it can be okay. But when you start doing a mass produce it at Apple scale, it has a lot of problems like off access color shifting, which means it can look more blue at an angle. There's um, issues with burn in. There's issues with pulse width modulation at lower brightness levels. And also the, the brights, the highlights aren't always contiguous at larger panel sizes. So like bright spots like snow can look splotchy where LED, mini LED has some problems too. Like it will halo, uh, like you'll see a glow around really bright elements on really dark backgrounds. 1000 nits of sustained full screen brightness, 1600 nits of peak brightness and a staggering 1 million to one contrast ratio. So that's the same as the iPad Pro. That's more than what Apple's currently driving their OLED displays, which top out at, you know, 1200 nits. So this is gonna be terrific. And I think it is a much smarter, much better choice than OLED right now at this panel size. So users can create, edit, and review HDR content with exceptional precision. And it's, it's gonna be like you have the afterburner, like this is basically, if we can appreciate this, everything Apple announced for the Mac Pro in 2019, they're integrating a version of it at least into the MacBook Pro now. We've doubled the resolution of the camera to 1080p. Now we're gonna see if they fix the potato cam. And use the lens with a wider aperture that lets in more light. Together with a larger image sensor that has more efficient pixels, the camera delivers two times better low light performance. And yeah, they're using the, the image signal processor, the ISP from the M1, which is either the same as the A14, if, if, sorry, the M1 Pro, M1 Max. So it's either the A14 or you know, off chance, the A15 image signal processor. Both of those are really, really good, more than enough for a MacBook. It just means that you get everything you can out of those, out of the pixels that that camera ingests, and it's ingesting more, more light than ever. We made our industry leading studio quality mics even better with an up to 60% lower noise floor. Studio quality mics for Apple just means that if you forget your USB microphone, like your Yeti or something, you'll be able to use your MacBook uh, as a replacement for that. It won't be like a, a, a game over for you. You'll be able to still do what you need to do, whether it's an interview or a recording on the road. And now, because assumably these won't have fan noise anywhere near what the Intel models do, do it'll be better than ever. The new 16 inch Pro has an even better six speaker sound system that features two tweeters and four force canceling woofers. The speaker system in the 16 inch MacBook Pro is ridiculous already. The tweeters are nearly two times larger. The woofer diaphragms are also larger and have an increased range of motion. So they can now displace twice as much air. This allows them to deliver 80% more bass. They're really smart about it too because they have these force canceling woofers that prevent it from bouncing. The last thing you want is your MacBook to be, you know, drumming against the table. So they they force cancel basically the, the effect of that. And we've brought this sensational six speaker sound system to the 14 inch Pro as well, which creates a sophisticated three dimensional sound stage. So when you're listening to music or watching a movie with Dolby Atmos, you get a theater like experience. So again, it's a serious escalation of Apple audio and you love to see it. You love to see that whole team just firing on all cylinders. M1 Pro and M1 Max has up to two times faster CPU performance than the previous generation with the Core i9. They're not comparing against the latest Intel, which is weird. I'd much rather see that comparison. And when it comes to graphics, M1 Pro is up to 2.5 times faster than the prior 16 inch model with the fastest GPU. But again, I would much rather they compare with the current generation. And when it comes to machine learning, you'll get up to five times faster performance. And I'm sure, you know, everybody and their, and their YouTuber is gonna do those comparisons. Compared to the 13 inch model with a Core i7, the 14 inch Pro has up to 3.7 times faster CPU performance. For graphics, M1 Pro delivers up to nine times faster performance. And M1 Max is up to an astonishing 13 times faster. The 14 inch model, you can get M1 Pro and M1X, which is great. So basically you're just choosing the size at this point and ML tasks are up to 11 times faster. I love it when Apple doesn't make you choose size based on features, but lets you choose size based on size. 
The unified memory architecture enables workflows that were previously unimaginable on a notebook. This is all good, like if you're upgrading year over year, and I hate talking about year over year upgrades because a lot of people upgrade only every five, seven years with their Macs, but pros do want the latest and greatest, and pros often bill these things out to clients or studios or work or places like that, so it's not as, as sensitive to more frequent upgrading. So it's gonna be a tremendous upgrade. I'm just curious how these chips compare to the latest APUs from AMD and, and you know CPU, GPU combos from, from Intel. PC laptops top out at 16 gigs of video memory. MacBook Pro has up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. Tremendous, especially if you're feeding those, if you're using all that unified memory to feed those GPUs. Basically, when you get to the Pro level, you just wanna remove roadblocks. You wanna remove the things that would stop you from working on a MacBook that would force you to work on a desktop. You can edit up to 30 streams of 4K ProRes video in Final Cut Pro, or up to seven streams of 8K ProRes. That's more streams than on a 28 core Mac Pro with Afterburner. A 444 is like raw, basically, it's, you know, it's perfect. 422 is a really good compromise between them. It's a little bit compressed, but it's still incredibly high quality. The super fast SSDs deliver up to a jaw dropping 7.4 gigabytes per second of read speeds. Which is not just important for read writes, but for all the swaps that you're doing. Uh, you know, because unlike iOS, uh, which just jetsums things when, the memory, when it's under memory pressure, Mac OS does swap. Um, so the faster that you can swap, the, the more SSD feels like RAM. So if you don't want to get, or you can't get bigger RAM, that this makes more of a difference to you. I just like the local storage. I hate dangling drives off, especially, I know we haven't traveled in a long time, uh, but in the before times, you know, before the world started ending, I hated traveling with drives because they would always disconnect and, and make things harder. So the more internal storage, the better. We'll get up to two times longer battery life in Lightroom Classic when editing images and developers working in Xcode will be able to compile four times as much code. Uh, we're not a number. I need a number here. Shruti, please, give me a number. The 14-inch model delivers up to 17 hours of video playback, which is seven additional hours. That's highly optimized workload. It's like the ideal workload because those coprocessors, those uh, accelerators are doing all the hard work. And the 16-inch model gets up to 21 hours of video playback, which is 10 additional hours. You're not gonna get anywhere near that on Final Cut Pro you know, or any really heavy task but it's, they are saying it's the longest battery life ever, and those do give you like at least a range compared to the previous ones. And the new MacBook Pro now supports fast charge for the very first time on Mac, so it can charge up to 50% in just 30 minutes. Presumably that'll require Apple's MagSafe, there'll be circuitry that just manage the power better, because you don't wanna charge faster if it destroys the health of your battery, so Apple's very careful at battery management technology. That's so why I always say, don't try to micromanage your battery yourself. The machine learning and the battery and the power management system will do a way better job than you will. It'll keep it idling at 80 so it doesn't stay at a high charge state. It'll, it'll turn off before it gets to a low charge state. Uh, and it'll gate for heat, all those sorts of things. Wait, is Tim gonna steal the chip from the iPad? Just a few, no, it's not Tim. We've created something wild. It's nice to see an ad for the MacBook Pro again. It's been a while, it's been way too long. Well, I guess it's been a while since we had a new MacBook Pro to be excited about M1 Pro. Nice big Michael Bay Transformer vibes. Apple likes their sci-fi references. Last year we had something that looked like a jump into and out of uh, hyperspace, out of light, you know, light speed, hyperspace, warp speed. But yeah, it looks great. And they did what I hoped they would do and that is uh, make it more of the current aesthetic, the square aesthetic, not by thinning it out more, but by maxing it out more. It's like a MacBook Pro. All for $19.99 or $24.99. Gonna have to wait for the complete review to see how they really live up to expectations, but something I know is amazing right now is today's sponsor, Maiden. Yeah, I cook. I love it. It's alchemy. And Maiden has worked with renowned chefs and artisans to produce some of the world's best pots and pans. They've seriously elevated my game because they distribute heat evenly. They work great from stove to oven. They're perfectly balanced as all things should be. And they're just super beyond strong and durable. Maiden just delivers it all with premium kitchen tools available directly to you without the markup and with a lifetime guarantee. And right now, because you're watching this video, Maiden is offering 15% off your first order. That is the best discount available anywhere online for Maiden. Just go to maidencookware.com slash Renee and use promo code Renee for 15% off your first order. That's maidencookware.com slash Renee 
promo code Renee. Clicking on that button just really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for more, just way more on everything Apple's announcing. So hit it up and I'll see you in the next video.